Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. We've just done another podcast. We have. I know. We've just released another podcast. So we spoke to the beautiful Jan Scene. Yes, that was lovely. The end of life doula. Yes. And we'll be featuring her in a few videos here as well. Yes. Uh, but we've just recorded another one. So head on over to our podcast we'll put the yep. links below wherever you get your podcast from yep and it's called are you going to know and you can listen to our little chit chat that we had yeah. just recently anyway to, like to chat. We, we do like to chat and people don't always like our chat but if they don't mm, you know too bad so sad yeah we just like it we like anyway it. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're rabbiting on now okay got go. anything to add Anything, any admin? Is there any admin, Tracy? Oh, admin, admin, admin. Um, yeah, I'm catching up. I'm catching up on all the emails. I, I've just started emailing people that message back in January and February. Oh, January. So sorry, I'm, I'm nearly at the end of the ones that I haven't replied to. So please forgive me. I am getting to all of them emails. Is that and a song? Please forgive me, let me go. It is, but I'm going to sing that. And also uh, messages on Instagram, that um, private messages I'm talking about that I'm still working through. So please bear with me, but we've got a lot, as well as all the comments on the uh, channel. So yeah, that, there's a lot. I think that's admin. Yeah, and we've got a live stream. Our live stream, 30th of April, 6 a.m. Brisbane, Queensland time. Google the time yourself where you are in the world because we don't know the time where you are. We don't know the time in India and Africa and the UK. Oh, and not even the UK, even though I, um, I know the UK. New Zealand and I still have all to the Google, places. I have to Google it myself and look at my watch and clock and go, what time is it in England so I know what time my family is around? To Google it, babies. Yes. Uh, okay, so, um, yes. We have a question today from Nicola. Hi, Nicola. Hello, Nicola. Thanks for writing to us. We thought your question was interesting, so we're going to answer it now for you on the channel. Yeah. Uh, and Nicola writes, super informative. I have a question. Have you ever had to warn a family not to touch the deceased? If so, what circumstances might this be in and how would you address the situation with the family? Love your channel. Sending love from America. We love Thanks, America. Nicola. Okay, so have you and would you and why? Uh, boom, boom. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. Done. Right, done. Yes. <laughs> yes is the answer to that question. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. No. Seriously, Tell no, us yes. about that. Yeah. Um, by the only times I would say not because, you know, when we do viewings, then you, we do viewings on beds in our uh, funeral home. So we put the the deceased person on a bed it's mm -hmm. a hospital bed mm -hmm. and the room is like a living room it's mm -hmm. got uh, furniture in we also have a piano and mm -hmm. lots of families like to play on that piano which is gorgeous because you're listening to a sing song so it's more like of a relaxed area where they can view they can view in a coffin if they request it's not a problem but it's not so clinical as yeah. you would expect yeah a coffin has a barrier on it so we tend to do the viewings on the bed so you can touch and hold and you know you know bring your children sit next to them yeah and and have a more, cuddle yeah, and do all the things lift up and put your arm round and lift yep. and hold and all of that kind of stuff and we always encourage families to bring children because i think children should know about death and cultures a lot of children do come so they can sit and climb on the bed and be with their loved one but sometimes we have situations where it's not advisable for the deceased to be on a bed and be in the coffin uh, and not to be touched much and this is usually uh, anywhere from either where I've done a huge reconstruction of the body or if we've got a lot of um, trauma to the body and severe skin slip and uh, the skin's very very delicate to touch you know so these are the uh, these are the times I would advise against touching uh, the person or moving the person but would never stop anybody doing that, but explain the reason why and what may happen. Because if it would you be do. distressing if you go like this and the person's hand yeah. comes off, like skin comes off. Yeah. So, so for instance, if we've got somebody that's severe skin slip and edema, so we're talking edema, which is the body swollen up and full of fluid. So it's like water retention, holding onto all that fluid and the skin tends to split then because we're, 
deceased and the skin's more delicate, it's breaking down, it's doing its natural decomposition uh, process. So I would, tr I would have treat that person. Treat. Yeah. Treat the person. <laughs> Treated. Treated the person. So basically trying to get the edema down as much as possible. Um, uh, putting some chemical on the drying to dry out the body, to dry out the skin. I would also then wrap the skin with blueies. A bluey is um, a blue coloured pad on one side with the absorbent pad on the other side, which would wrap around and then bandage. So I'd bandage where I could, but even under that bandage, the skin could be very, very, very delicate. And if you were to touch them, you might break that again and leakage would start again. And we might get some leakage coming down, like if you touch the arm. Or on the clothes or yeah. on, the, on and, the family. And then it could be a shock to the family. So that I would tell that to the family and say, you know, be careful because this may happen. And it could be the same with the face, the severe skin slip on the face, but it's still presentable. But if, you know, so I'm not going to bandage the whole face, up, but I will treat and dry out all of the uh, face area and probably cosmetize to try and make it look more, you know, less uh, horrific or confronting. And often when it's that bad, Tracy will airbrush instead of touch That's because right. you can't apply any pressure whatsoever to put makeup on. Break. So she'll just airbrush the makeup on to the yep. person and we've got a video on that and I will point to that up there yep. um, just if you want some more information on that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's totally right. Definitely would not touch the face and that, that and, and that's what I'd explain to the family. I'll go, you know, really sorry, severe skin slip and the reason I put a bit of makeup on with airbrushing but if you are to touch or move, you know, you could then tear the skin and we get some, leak, uh, some fluid coming out and also I would explain if that was to happen to a gentleman and the family have asked me to shave the person, they've got stubble, I would tell them I really can't shave them because if I do shave them, it's going to take all of that skin away and it'll make it raw and weepy. And, you know, so I then advise, we advise the family and always tell them. So there's some situations. And then I've got situations where we've had a full reconstruction, you know, where we reconstructed the reattached the head, reattached limbs, uh, you know, done a lot of work where we've rebuilt the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the face. In these scenarios where we've done a full reconstruction um, of reattaching everything, rebuilding, um, again, I would advise the viewing to be in a coffin because if you're lifting the body up and I've reattached the head or the limbs, even though they're attached, they're still going to move quite a bit. Well, they're not attached know. joint wise, are they? No, you haven't reconstructed yeah. a shoulder, you've no, just sewn the skin together. The skin's just mm. been sewn and the skin's just been sewn on here. So it'll be a, a case of I need to stabilize the body in the coffin, which is the easiest and you know the safest and nicest way to then present that person because of the trauma. So, I, but we would tell the family, and the family would know that there's so much trauma that we would advise not to. Yeah, you touch, you know, hold on, but try not to move or lift or you know go up and cuddle and move anything like that because, because imagine that if yeah, somebody's head fell off or it moves, you know, it'll like just move around, horrendous. it'll not fall, but no, but it would, it would, yeah, yeah, it's not got any support. It's got no support, just the skin's keeping it on together where we where I've uh, done the suture. So these are the um, times I would advise against moving or touching the body if necessary but you know you could still hold on you could still just you know a little gentle touch a little hold if you wanted to do that but I, again we can't stop families i think it that. comes down to like everything in life like corporate life or business life or relationships with your partner or whoever yeah communication is key you just have this to communicate and set the expectations and let people know what to expect. That's right. And then if it happens, then they are responsible. They wanted to hold and touch. And if they did and those things happen, well, they know that that's going to happen. And that's right. Yes. I think that's where it's important that people feel comfortable enough to have those conversations with their funeral homes and funeral directors. Yeah. And that you guys um, are forthcoming in giving them the information that they need. Uh, and yeah, and I think that's right. I think it's the information we give. We shouldn't be telling them fibs. We shouldn't be like going... Glossing it yeah, over. You know, if they're asking the question and there's a reason we need to tell them, you can tell them in the most caring, dignified way. It's, it doesn't have to be saying, hey, oi, you, yeah. don't even go there and touch 
but yeah. I don't need to tell you why, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah, total respect and care and giving the explanation properly. Uh, what's that word? Concise? Concisely? Yeah, is that a word? Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> means to say it shortly without rambling on with crap. <laughs> like me. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I think it's also, you know, it's interesting because we always talk about our society and how our society has this phobia and, and fear and unknown around death, yep. but we kind of perpetuate it ourselves. Yeah. In situations like that where you're open and honestly telling people what to expect and what the process, natural decomposition processes are, yes. and like Jan Seen mentioned in our last podcast as well, to tell people what to expect is going to happen to that body if they have it at home for any period of time and it's not embalmed, yeah. well, that's all people need to know. But it's yeah. this taboo around that sort of conversation. Yes, we decompose. Yes, we smell. Yes, we turn to fluid and goobery stuff. And we that's what it. happens yeah. to a dead kangaroo on the road or a piece of fruit in the fruit bowl. That's or right, yeah. It's nature. And we're all... Organic nature, yeah. And we'll organic, break down. man. Yeah, <laughs> we're all organic, yeah, and we'll just break down. Yeah, we will. Yeah. And sometimes our bodies start to break down before we even die. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, because we're on medications. So people live longer because we're on medications to keep us going. But technically, we are decomposing in life, you know, as we're going through. Yeah. Our cells break, our cells die every single day. I look decomposed. No, you don't. <laughs> well, I've never seen a decomposed person, so that's a pretty sweeping statement. Yeah. I can imagine what they'd look like, and sometimes I feel like I look that way. No, you don't look like a decomposed person. Do I smell me, like one? You smell delicious. You yeah, do not delicious. smell like a decomposed person. Believe me. I wouldn't know. Although often we're out running and Tracy's like, decomp, dead animal there somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can smell a dead animal Somewhere in the bushes. As Miles we away. Past, like, we um we always joke, and it's not quite really funny because no. it happens, but, but we happen. joke that the runners always find the bodies. The and day. there's a little place that we run near here where there's a boardwalk that goes through and the water from the ocean actually comes into the mangroves under the boardwalk when it's high tide yeah. and when it goes, the water goes away. And when we run through there, I always check. I'm scanning in case yeah. there's someone, just yeah. in case. I always think that And she's gonna... sniffing. <laughs> be a decomposed body in their mangroves they're pretty mm. scary their mangroves when they are there was a goat there once oh yeah Remember there was the goat? a goat yeah mm. and that wasn't the goat we no, saved no we, we saved a goat was, but we didn't uh, save it was, it died this one was already dead and it was floating in the mangroves and yeah that was oh that was scary mm. yeah but their mangroves are beautiful but can be scary creepy especially when the sun's just rising and you got mm. all the, the light just trickling through so yeah yeah. Anyway, we digress. But anyway, yeah, I hope that answers. That's a your big question. word. Yes. <laughs> yes. I had my have... Weetabix this morning. Your Weetabix. Uh-huh. <laughs> Such a pom. They don't call them Weetabix here. In no, Australia. we don't. They're yeah. wheat bix. The There's wheat. no R. Uh, we don't need an R. Uh. You know what you wheat, guys do wheat, too? Wheat, I wheat, said this wheat. to a um a English client of mine the other day. Yeah. She was talking about getting a McDonald's, and yeah. I'm like, I love how you guys say that. She's getting like, say what? Getting a tie. Getting an Indian, yeah. getting a McDonald's. And I'm like, and you say that? Yeah, I do. think about the person. So I think about getting a Thai person, <laughs> getting an Indian person, you it's know. Funny. Yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're going to get a Thai. Or get a McDonald's. Oh, yeah, and she it. said, well, what do you say? And I say, we get McDonald's. Yeah. Well, we don't get, I don't get yeah. McDonald's, but, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we, we get a McDonald's. I think we need to do this sitting at a desk. I feel like I'm disappearing down the back <laughs> of the lounge here. <laughs> A bit okay, maybe we need to change to get a desk. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, on that note. I'll post you on that note. See you on our live stream, yeah. guys. See you soon. Take Bye. care. Bye.